So this week saw the release of the very first Battlefield 1 monthly update from DICE, referred to as the May update, which is cutting it pretty close. It focuses on improvements based off community feedback, specifically regarding weapons, gameplay, various tweaks, game mode balances and even adjustments to the operations game mode. Setting somewhat of a new standard, the May update is a very comprehensive one, bringing with it a lot of quality tweaks and gameplay changes in favour of community requests and feedback. Now without further ado, let's get into the notable changes. One of the bigger changes comes to the operations game mode. In an effort to mitigate the high possibility of matchmaking to an empty server, operations will now rather loop back to the same operation. This means that instead of being kicked back to the main menu at the end of an operation, it will merely restart, but this time placing everyone on the opposite team. So if you were defending previous round, now you'd be attacking, and vice versa. By remaining in game it keeps the game flowing, and almost entirely removes the odds of matchmaking to an empty server, as you are no longer forced to search for a new operations game after each match. This doesn't affect as much locally, as operations seem to be an unfavourable game mode for us South Africans. Which is a bit of a shame, as I regard it as being one of the best game modes available in Battlefield 1. Since the patch though, I've still only been able to find empty local operations servers, but I really hope this change does draw more players back to it, so that we can embrace the epicness of this game mode. There are many other game mode gameplay and vehicle changes in this update which I'm sure will interest you guys as well. The ticket rate in Domination has now been increased to 200 from the previous 100 tickets. This will help lengthen the Domination matches, especially when teams are slightly or even heavily unbalanced, which used to lead to very short, often 2 minute rounds of Domination. DICE have also tweaked the Conquest scoring values, rewarding you with less score for capturing the points but also changing the scoring mechanic. By adding more capture ticks to the capture process, they now reward players who start capturing the flag from the get-go. So if you're one of the players who neutralized and then capture the flag for the whole duration, you will accumulate more score than a guy who let's say jumps in the last few seconds to nab those sweet capture rewards. They've also added conquest bonuses to teams who control three or more flags than the opposing team. So for the score per minute fanatics out there like myself, this is a massive incentive for playing the objective and cutting the opposing team off. There are very many vehicle changes in this update, far too many to go through, but all at least are listed in the patch notes below this video, so I'll try and focus on the bigger, more impacting changes and tweaks. One of the most notable changes comes to the stationary weapons. AA batteries and field guns can no longer be permanently destroyed, but rather reach a disabled status when they receive 50% of their base health damage, allowing them to be repaired back to full health and operation again. Their health has also been doubled, making it an even tougher task to disable them. This is especially bad news for pilots who'd use the cheaper tactics of knocking the AAs out in the beginning of a match and pruning away risk-free for the rest of the round. AA guns have also seen a welcome buff. Having their vertical range increased allows them now to be able to take out aircraft directly above them, especially those that are cruising at the flight ceiling altitude. The horizontal range remains unchanged however, to not entirely nerf lower flying planes who practice keeping their distance from AA batteries. Planes have fortunately been counter-buffed for balance as well, particularly the attack planes and even more specifically the underused variants of the attack plane. Regarding the attack plane variants, the Airship Buster's primary machine gun's damage has been increased from 32 to 40, placing its anti-aircraft capabilities on par with that of the fighter planes. The increased cooldown for the speed boost ability on the Airship Buster will, for a short time, allow it to reach a faster and much tighter turning circle than a fighter plane, creating a window of opportunity to shake off those pesky aces and generally just making the Airship Buster more competitive in its AA role. The fighter planes have also seen some welcome changes. The Dogfighter for one now has a secondary weapon which allows it to fire incendiary rounds that do a lot more damage to plane parts, allowing the Dogfighter to cripple opponents faster. It has also had its emergency repair ability switched out for a speed boost in respect of balance. The Bomber Killer variant of the fighters has in return had its speed boost ability changed to emergency repair, helping it survive longer in the skies against tail guns. Light tanks have also seen a vast amount of changes. The close support tank secondary K shells have been exchanged with the coaxial LMG, and its 37mm main cannon ammo count increased from 4 shells to 5, helping it fulfill its close support role more effectively. The flanker tank's reload time has been increased by just over a second, while its heavy explosive autocannon's direct damage has seen an impressive increase as well. This will make the flanker a lot more effective against vehicles and less effective against infantry. And last of the light tanks, the howitzer has had its primary light machine gun upgraded to a heavy machine gun. This more powerful weapon will help the howitzer offset its limited firing arc disadvantage by doing more damage per hit. 
Other mentionable changes to tanks include the Tank Hunter Landship receiving a rear-facing tank cover as a driver secondary weapon, while the MKV Mortar Landship's airburst mortars have been exchanged with heavy mortars that reload slower but do a lot more damage. It also had its smoke and gas mortar rounds replaced with the track repair and vehicle smoke abilities to better its chances at survival in the field. Infantry has not gone amiss and a tried and thoroughly tested change to bayonets, which has been present in the CTE for a while now, has finally made its way to the live game. The token battle cry voiceover that strikes fear into many an unaware player has now seen a volume boost to give more warning of the lunatic charging at you with a pointy gun. The passive damage reduction you had when charging has now been removed while the turning arc during a bayonet charge has also seen a 50 degree limitation making it fairly harder to pull off. The May update has also introduced some gameplay, controls and user interface changes. To the likes of an advanced gameplay setting to adjust the amount of camera shake caused by explosions. Also soldiers low on ammo will now have a low ammo indicator to better assist the support players dishing out ammo packs. And for players using controllers, custom button and stick mapping has now been made available as well. Then last but not least, there have been some netcode changes. The server side hit detection settings impacted by the ping thresholds that were introduced by the previous patch still stand. So for those of you frequenting European servers, you'll still have a very poor experience when running on a ping upwards of 130. However, the shot leading time is directly calculated by your margin above the threshold. So if you have a ping of 160, you'll need to lead by 30 milliseconds line instead of a generic lead, which may make it less of a challenge than before. And finally, server-side hit registration interpolation has been fixed and so has client-side input offsets, both leading to less kill trades and more improved server-side hit detection. So that's it guys, quite a handful of welcome and interesting changes. How do you guys feel about these changes and why aren't you guys playing operations? I feel so alone there and I think we'll need to arrange a community operations event sometime soon. For more information on that and other Battlefield news, stay tuned to MF Game Zone. And as always, I'll see you guys on the battlefield.